Bamboo Lab A1 Combo. Here it is, finally came in. Um, I had this ordered before the big uh, Bamboo Labs controversy. Uh, I still have a P1S also ordered. I decided not to cancel them. I'm going to uh, work around their little firmware fiasco thing. We operate in land mode anyway, so it's uh, I don't need to update firmware. So uh, I'm going to get this unboxed. I'm going to do a few mods to it. I'm going to mount the uh, AMS on top of it like a lot of people do to take up less space. I also have a uh, filament enclosure that I'm going to be putting on the AMS light that is it's on Maker World and I printed it out here a while back. So we'll get that all put on there too and then I need to figure out exactly where I'm going to set it here. Uh, if you watched my previous videos, I have talked about moving my entire print farm into the basement of our house. So we have a long counter down there that we no longer use. Other than to accumulate stuff because it's a flat surface. So I may move everything down there and that would save having to air condition this loft up here in the summer all the time. And heat it quite this warm in the winter. So I'm going to get this thing unboxed. I'm not going to show the whole unboxing on it. I'm just going to take it out. We'll get it set up on the table here. And I'll see what I need to do to get that uh, AMS put on the top and get the filament enclosures put on it. Little unboxing tip here is uh, have a second person to hold that box while you try to slide this whole thing out. It's got flaps on the plastic here at the top you pick up, but you need to have somebody to hold the box. And I didn't have anybody here and I had to do a kind of a weird thing with my feet. But if you have a second person to hold the box while you slip this out, it'll slip right out of there. Instructions are right on top along with the, uh, looks like a PEI plate. And from there we got a lot of parts and pieces to all take out of the foam. Everything of course is well packed. So I'll get all that done. Then we'll get this thing set up. Make sure you look at all your little compartments here on the foam when you're unpacking this because they have accessories that are tucked into these little compartments on the foam. So don't overlook them. Okay, you're going to have lots of zip ties and uh, pieces of foam to remove. Okay, next we're going to have to put this at a little bit of a 45 degree angle and it lines up with the frame here. Like so, and on the bottom you're going to have some things to plug in. So next we're going to need to move this all the way forward and remove this cover back here. And from here we will have some screws to put in. And they come in the hardware kit and the little bag. All the screw packages are labeled according to where they go. It's going to make an assembly really simple. Base, every place you need to put a hole is marked in green. So that makes it really simple and you got a handful of screws. They do give you a Allen wrench. I prefer to use this ball driver here. Makes it a lot quicker for me. So it's just a matter of putting screws in every one of these holes and tightening them all down. And once you get all those tightened up there you need to push the heat bed down to the other end because there's two more there to do and you will have one screw left over because like most companies anymore they always send an extra screw in case one has bad threads or you have a cat and it bats one away somewhere or something happens to one of them. So it's just a matter of then of putting these last two screws in. Okay with that being done we could put the y-axis cover back on. There's a clip up here on the front that has to go in um, at the uh, front of the heat bed so you want to pay close attention to that. Make sure that all lines up there. And it snaps right back in like so. Okay, next you want to lay your printer on the back. It says to lay it on the edge of a table. I'm just, I've got the other side propped up with a piece of the packing foam that this came in. So you've got a USB-C here. That needs to plug in right up under here. And then you've got uh, your X motor and your Z motor and they're color coded. They plug into these little jacks here. So you want to uh, get that lined up in there good so that it slides in. 
like so. There's a screw right here you need to put in then. It's already pre-installed. You've also got a little wire down here for the camera. A little black and white thing here. Held down with a piece of tape. That needs to route up in this little slot and then around a little door that opens up on that. We can hide it in there. And now the Z motor. We'll plug that one in and then I'll route the cable. It could be a little easier to do that way. Yep, that little cover snaps shut. Extra wire tucks right up in there. And you're done. I may have misspoke a little bit about which cable was which, but it'll become obvious when you go to plug them in. The camera is the one that was already up here, and the Z axis is the cable that was wound up and taped down here. I may have said that that was a uh, camera, but it's the other way around. And the next thing here is a wiper that goes on this end here, just slips in like so. Okay, because I am going to be doing a uh, modified mount with the uh, AMS by putting it on top, I'm not going to assemble the AMS quite yet. We're going to get the plate on here and turn this thing on and make sure it works. One thing I don't understand is why more printer manufacturers don't put the power switch on the front instead of on the back. Uh, with the exception of my King Runes over there, when they have the power switch in the front, it's very convenient, but they all, everybody puts them in the back. Oh, well, a little light came on, so that's a good sign. Okay, and I can hit start, and I'll get this set up on my LAN here. Okay, I wish the screen was a little bit bigger. I got kind of fat fingers, and trying to put the uh, password in for our LAN here was a little bit of a challenge without being fat fingered over more than one letter and number at a time. But we got it in there, we got connected, we're on the LAN, so now it's going to go through its calibration. It'll have motor noise cancellation, about five minutes, vibration compensation, about seven minutes, and auto bed leveling, about 15 minutes. Okay, my bad, I forgot to take these off. I even knew they were there and I needed to take them off and I still forgot about it. So you got one of these on each side. Okay, that was a dull moment. One nice thing here is the, uh, the printer comes with everything you need hardware-wise for the top mount. Uh, and if you're interested in the top mount, if you go on uh, on their site here, on Makers, whatever they call that, it's called AMS Top Light Mount for the A1. And it's, it's got instructions there and everything it tells you what parts to print, how to put it together. It's got a little video there, so I'm not going to repeat that. I'm just going to show what this looks like when I'm done with it. So I'm assembling my parts and pieces here. I already pre-printed all the parts for this. So there's a top mount all installed and uh, before I go any further I'm going to go ahead and put my, uh, I, well, I guess we'll call it a dry box enclosure. Uh, it will enclose the spools and uh, hopefully help keep the filament dry. There's some uh, spots in there for desiccant and there again that's something else that uh, you can download and print. Here's lots of parts and pieces to this uh, what I'm going to call a dry box enclosure. Uh, one of the parts here, I've got this filled with desiccant beads. This fits up on the inside and there's a uh, humidity indicator that also goes on here that I'll be showing once I get everything put together. Helps to put it in the right direction too. And little clips hold it in place. And there's then there's covers that go on this too. We'll, we'll get to that. Okay, so here's what the whole thing looks like when it's uh, loaded, and uh, I got the old spools loaded in here now. And on this side, there is a humidistat that shows the uh, humidity. I should, yeah, it's not a humidistat, it's a humidity indicator. Uh, hydrometer, that's the word for it. This one shows the atmospheric, and this one shows what's inside. So what's inside is at 28% right now, and what's outside is at 32%. So I need to get the rest of this put back together, and then we're going to do a test print on it. Okay, got it powered up here. It's heating up the nozzle. We'll see if it loads filament like it should. Yeah, well, it's not recognizing the AMS here, so what's the deal? Always remember when you put an AMS on you actually have to plug it in in the back back here because that was why I wasn't seeing the AMS because I didn't have it plugged in. So bad on my part. So we'll 
We're going to bench you here and uh, see how it goes. Haven't done anything other than just clean the, that bed plate, PI plate. Well, perfect benchy, or more or less benchy, a lot like the regular benchies. I can add that to my benchy barge. Yeah, and this isn't even all of the ones that have been printed over the years, but uh, got this little benchy barge thing going on, uh, so I need to make another extension to it as I add more. Okay, I got her placed over here. I'm a little uh, cramped about how I was going to do that, but. It just barely fits where I wanted to put it. Uh, when I originally measured that, I didn't account for the uh, spools on top. I was originally going to put them between these two X1 carbons, but it'll do here for now. And as I've mentioned before, I may be moving my whole print farm down into the basement of the house on that big counter down there. So uh, printed a couple little things here. Everything's turned out just great. It's been just fine. Uh, humidity has dropped down 10% inside, just as it is on those over here. So everything's looking good there. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. And yes, I know there's been some controversy with Bamboo. And I was a little bit frustrated with her tech support on one of my X1 Carbons. But we finally did get it straightened out. It just took a, long, it just took a month. And it, it really shouldn't have. Perhaps the holidays were part of it, but whatever. Uh, I am happy with Bamboo Labs uh, printers. I am not sponsored by them. I am not a Bamboo Labs affiliate. Everything here you see from Bamboo Labs I have purchased. And yes, there is a P1S coming yet. And I also have ordered an Anycubic Cobra Max. So uh, I needed another uh, large format printer and uh, Anycubic seems to have a pretty good unit there. I looked at uh, Creality's K2 and was seriously considering it until one of my viewers pointed out that they are deleting negative comments. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And he says, well, go ahead and look. Look at their uh, feedback on their uh, reviews on their website. So if you go and look, the first couple pages, there's all kinds of half star and one star reviews. You get past that second page and everything's four and five star. I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. So perhaps they have been de deleting. I also seen uh, a few videos of people that are having problems with the uh, filament system on it and a few other things and it being a plastic extruder and there's been quite a few things so I opted to just skip that. Um, I'll wait and see how my P1S works out. It should be fine. It'll be right in line with these uh, X1 carbons and then of course the, the Cobra Max when that gets here but that's on pre-order. So. Enough of that, Got, that's how I did the A1. I'll put links in the description about the top mount and about the uh, uh, enclosure to keep your filament dry on the uh, AMS light. That'll be in the description. I'm Roger in the loft above the shop. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.